What's going on everyone, it's your Rifle here, and in today's video I'm going to be going over the Hard Crotazin Raid. And a lot of us know that this raid can take some time to beat, especially finding a good squad to be able to get through this. Well in this video I'm going to be covering a certain strategy to make this fight a lot more easier. And trust me, I know for sure, because I've had people that were struggling for a long time on it, and then switched to my game, told them about this strategy, and they're like, wow, this strategy actually makes progress go by more smoother. Reason why is because you don't have to focus on a lot of things at once. Sure, you're still going to have to be focusing on things, but you're only going to have to put in a few shots on the boomers just to gain their attention and focus on the sword bear in the strategy. But anyways, enough about the small talk. Let's get started with this strategy. Starting from the crystal, there's going to be a timeless fight, which means you don't really have to worry about enrage happening. You can take your time on this fight. Literally nothing happens on the outside until you leave the doors of this area. But for the most of us, people like to get this small fight done as quick as possible. And the best way to do it is that three squad members take on one side and another three squad members take on the other. And then once you get done with a lot of your side, try to help with the other side just to make the progress go by quicker and smoother because you never know if someone's going to end up losing some health. If you guys haven't played the Hard Curtis in Raid yet, well there is no chalice at all to pick up. And that chalice was used to heal us because our shield does not regenerate here. And now we have no regeneration way. Only way to regenerate is, well, you could use a Red Death, you could use a Surish Regime, you could use the Blade Dancer Hunter skill, you could use the Warlock self res skill, but if you do go and use the self res with the Warlock, you want to make sure your teammates know to get ready to focus on that Oversoul. It can be a slight risky way to heal yourself, but that is a way to get max health with the Warlock. You can use the Titan's Blessing, which that's just a temporary thing but it does spawn some orbs, and that can also heal you as well, and can be a good combination near the sword holder against Crota. I don't know, there's a lot of ways to heal yourself. I'm sure I didn't name off every single way, but there's you a lot of examples. I have found that staying on top of this doorway is actually a very nice spot to keep your health up. There's also plenty of cover down below. You just gotta look for certain crevices, you know, certain areas to hide behind, certain doorways. You got more room than you think in this center area, and acolytes can start shooting you from the other side, so think about where you're starting at, when you first start up this little fight. And what's special about this little fight, you can actually get some nice heavy ammo at the beginning of it. And even if you don't pick it up in the beginning, you're gonna end up coming back into this area. Your group's gonna be regathering here. So hey, that's always some good news. Speaking of heavy ammo, I always found it nice if one of your squad members end up dying and you guys are gonna end up needing to wipe some way, I don't know. Maybe things aren't going as smooth and you know you aren't going to kill the Oversoul. Go scavenge for heavy ammo down in the middle where all the thrall are. Cause you never know if heavy ammo dropped down there and it's something to save yourself from using a synthesis. But anyways, enough about the beginning fight. You guys probably heard enough about this fight. You're like, ah, that's not my problem. I want to hear it all. Well, you never know who this could be helping out. Anyways, once you get through this fight, it's suggested to use something that turns invisible, especially if you're low on health before leaving this area because the boom booms can get you and it's another way to be extra safe. But if you don't have invisible, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you're getting out of the room with your group. Don't let the booms take you out because their missed shots aiming for the squad that's grouped together end up hitting you, the guy that's trailing behind. Now I'm not actually pointing fingers and saying you're the cause, and I'm just throwing this out there because you never know who this could end up helping out. I'm not directly pointing fingers. But anyways, once you all end up leaving this room, you all want to go to the center platform. Now I'm not talking about down below because the gatekeeper is down there now, but technically we are still in the center, so I just call this the center platform. Make sure your whole squad is standing on this area, focusing on the sword bear that ends up coming out straight ahead. If you find the sword bear going crazy left and right, like you can't end up finding him, well try to hold your fire a little bit on the sword bear, because that can kind of mess up his rotation of him coming toward you guys. Instead the sword bear will go all the way to the right, or all the way to the left, and you can't really see them from the center, so you're like, what the heck? Sometimes when doing this method, you'll go back out and you'll end up finding out the sword bear is directly below you. But you do have some movable room on the center platform, but be careful of your teammates using the boom booms. So I'm saying, if he's on the right side, you want to move to the left, and if he's on the left side, you want to move to the right, of course. Once you finally end up taking down the sword bear, the person that's going to be holding the relic needs to hurry up and get down there as quick as possible. The reason why is because Crota can start running left and right and that can really mess up a sword run. If all goes well within the first run, he normally runs right. You want to make sure your squad heads left, just so you can dodge him when he goes right. Anyway, some more about the sword holder. When the person goes to jump to get the sword, that person is suggested to start going right before the sword bear is about to die. Right when you know he's about to fall down, just because then 
the reliquary will have a head start on grabbing that sword and you'll be able to do this as quick as possible and that is the goal especially on the first run because the first run can normally determine are you going to be able to do this or are you not going to be able to do this? So normally that person wants to jump a little bit before the sword bear is going to die. Just so he has a little bit of a head start. And it can be a cluster up down there. So I suggest throwing a grenade or two just to help out the person grabbing the relic. Because you never know. You don't want that person getting the relic and taking a little bit of damage. Because you never know if, if the boomer gets a little bit of hits on him. And if the boomer does get a little bit of hits on him, well the relic holder could be effed. Because you got to remember he has to make it all the way back to the safe room. So while you guys are standing in the center platform... You want to try to distract the boomers a little bit. Take a couple shots on the boomer, get them pointed toward you right around when your relic holder is picking up the relic. And also it's suggested that the relic holder should turn invisible on this rock. Just makes the fight a lot more smoother and the boomers don't really worry about you. And once you get up here attacking Crota with the sword, if you're holding the sword, you want to try your best to get some swings on him. You can move faster to Crota by swinging in the air and going toward Crota if you get what I'm saying. And once you get to him, you know, smash that right trigger down on him. The relic is normally listening to the other player saying, he's going down, Crota's going down, or something like that. But anyways, once Crota gets back up from the first sword hits, the sword holder wants to use Blink Vanish as quick as possible on Crota. And you know, make sure you're dodging your sword a little bit when you drop the sword. Because that sword can kill you. And I don't really know what's wrong with the sword. Sometimes it glitches out when someone goes to grab it. I think that's just a little bug that Bungie's having with this raid right now. But it happened to us quite often. And when we saw that happen in the beginning, we just all wiped. We're all like, F it. We already got a sword down. It's this early. Not really worth it. Alright, now after the first little fight, and you all head left through the door back into that room where I said we're going to regather at. Before you head off, it's suggested to kind of distract the boomers for the sword holder so the boomers don't shoot at the sword holder as much before you jump off the middle platform. It helps out. But also remember, do not kill the boomers just because there is a chance that a wizard can spawn. And that shit can be quite annoying. But anyways, once you guys end up regathering here, wait for a minute, point at Crota, dance at Crota, wave at Crota, I don't know, treat Crota like your puppy. And wait for him to go back to the middle. Once he's back at the middle, that's when you all are going to meet up back at the center platform outside. Make sure to use your invis or whatever keeps you safe if you're low on health when heading back out here. Now you're just going to have to repeat the process and take out the sword bear and also get some good hits or try to get some good hits on Crota. But after this second sword hold, the sword holder wants to head immediately into this ogre room. This ogre room allows us finding the ogres and taking care of the ogres go by a lot faster. Y'all just want to make sure you focus fire on the ogre when that bad boy comes out of his spawn. Because these ogres are like too many Fogoths on the field. They're no joke. They have tons of freaking health. Then after you take out this ogre, the other ogre should be out somewhere in the middle of the field or possibly coming toward you guys already. Or also the ogre could be hiding in the middle section where the sword bear sometimes goes and is tricky to find. And also while being in this ogre room, be very careful with shooting rockets. Some of these hooks, when you jump up in the air, you can accidentally shoot yourself, or like always, you can accidentally shoot yourself because of teammates. So be careful when using the rockets. But yeah, once you guys take out the ogres, when exiting out of this room, try to toss a few grenades to take care of explosive thrall, because those explosive thrall could end up killing you, and then there goes the whole strategy, because you're near the end now. You just gotta be extra safe. Play it ninja. We're gonna be leaving this ogre room and regathering back into the center room. Be careful, watch out for thrall. Potential thrall could get into that area, and you could be a goner. Also, it's suggested before regathering in this room, you could also use a titan's blessing to help protect people from boomer shots, so your squad gets in safer. But once you're at this part, this is it. This is when you wanna take Crota a little slower. You wanna make sure you don't get his health down below 20%. Because once he's down below 20%, well then the Oversoul will spawn. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is around 20%. I don't know, you guys can see Crota's health. This is where you want Crota to be. You want his health bar to be right here. Because the next time you go to hit him, you want to finish this fight. Because the Oversoul will spawn. Do not focus on the Oversoul. Don't focus on the Oversoul. Keep focusing fire on Crota. And also make sure you are being careful where you're standing at on this center platform because Thrall come up behind you through this energy barrier and are able to hit you 
through the energy barrier that is behind you. So be careful. Do not stand so close to that. Freaking surprise me. Make sure you get Crota down so the sword guy can finish him off. And hopefully while the sword holder is attacking Crota and this oversoul has came up, you want to make sure the boomers are not focusing on him. Because the boomers can do some unexpected heavy damage. I mean, I gotta admit though, the oversoul idea for the ending fight is pretty epic. It's like, holy crap, what's going on? Explosions! I don't know, it's just the end of the fight and everything just feels crazy. There's so much pressure going on, and there's this huge explosion that's about to happen if I don't take care of Crota. And to kind of think of it, the Oversoul just kind of looks like us when we die a little bit. It's like Crota's soul. And it does kind of make sense. I mean, look how giant Crota is compared to Guardians. Maybe it's just an enhanced soul, or that's why it's called the Oversoul. I'm just kidding, but it's kind of funny how it looks. But yeah, guys, hopefully this tutorial helps you all out, because this took me forever to end up beating Hard Crota. And finally, we got this strategy down, and it seems to work so much. Like, it makes the fight a lot more easier. I'm gonna go ahead and show you my two rewards. The first time that I beat Crota, I got the Word of Crota, which is the Hand Cannon. And I also got the Glow Who Shader. And this thing is awesome. And I called what it was gonna look like. I knew it was going to be similar to Crota. I called it in my review I was doing of the Hard Crota's in Raid. And yes, I want a cookie. And not to mention, someone else in our game got the Grave Robber Sparrow, which this is similar to the Time Breaker from the Vault of Glass. But anyways, for my second reward, I got the Dragon's Breath and the Fang of Ur Ute Scout Rifle. And this is what I was wanting most of all. I wanted a new Scout Rifle. And I wanted this Scout Rifle for a specific reason. And I'm not going to exactly tell you guys that specific reason yet, because it's a nice... Thing that I'm going to go over once I get this weapon upgraded. I'm also going to be doing a review on the hand can as well. What did you guys end up getting from Hard Crota if you have defeated him yet? Or if you do defeat him, come back here and comment what you got. I'm always interested in seeing what people get from Crota, especially when I'm playing in the game with them. So yeah, I feel awesome. Yeah guys, I guess that's about wrapping up this video. Hopefully this ends up saving you a lot of time. And if you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like. It is much appreciated by me. But I'm not going to say anymore. I'm out of here though. Thanks everyone for watching. And most importantly, thank you all for your time. Peace. 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 <laughs>